WPTV Town Hall. Coverage collapse. Well, welcome back once again as we continue our conversation here at our Town Hall Coverage Collapse. Well, I'm glad we did this because we could yeah. probably go for another hour here. Easily. We are not going to go for another hour. We are going to take some more questions here online. And I want to go right to our social media desk in the newsroom with uh, Tanya Rogers. Tanya, uh, tell us what you're hearing, what you're seeing over there. And so many questions have been coming in. The latest one I wanted to share from Martin Jacobson. The question is, why do my rate increases include the value of the land that my house sits on and not just the replacement cost of the structure? That's a good question. Robert, you're shaking your head. What's yeah, uh, normally on? they do not. We're only interested in insuring the building. So you might want to get with your agent again and have them recalculate that. Every carrier has their own replacement cost analysis, and they should only be looking at the buildings. Okay. Barbara, I promised I was going to come to you. Stand up for a minute. You're a senior. I am. You have citizens. I don't have any. I am an unwind un storm insured citizen. I am a senior citizen on a fixed income. I live in a house in Lake Worth for 35 years, built in 1925 east of Dixie. Yeah. So at my, the cost of my home, my windstorm, just windstorm was $10,000. So with a paid for house, I could no longer cover it. And I had a, I have regular homeowners, of course, but I cannot carry windstorm. OK, so this is a huge topic going without insurance. We didn't even get to this in the broadcast because it is a small percentage. But Florida has a large percentage of people without homeowners insurance. Is Mark Freelander still with us in Tallahassee? I'm not sure. I believe it's 15 percent. Is it 15 percent? Uh, Mark, are well, you still yeah, there? Like, Mark, Mark, what's going on with with? Uh, tell me about uh, the value or even the pitfalls of going without even wind coverage. Let me break this down for you. Recently, the Insurance Information Institute did a national consumer survey with Munich Re, the global reinsurer, and we saw that 12% of U.S. homeowners do not have property insurance. So it's growing nationally. Florida is ahead of that curve at about 15%. And it's a huge problem because we saw so many uninsured Floridians suffer major damage from Hurricane Ian last year. So we tell consumers, do everything you possibly can to maintain coverage, even if you're not required to because you no longer have a mortgage, you're taking a huge financial risk without property insurance. Yeah, but Barbara here says she simply can't do it. Right. And you know, Holly, I want to talk to you about this because I heard some discussion here tonight about all oh, the New Yorkers and the Northeasters mm -hmm. coming down, paying cash for houses. Yeah. These are people who don't have to take homeowners insurance, right? If you're paying cash for a house, do you, are you seeing that? Yeah, one thing that's really unique to Florida is that we've had this mass migration of people who are he coming here and paying cash for homes, right? So they don't need to carry insurance. And with that comes mm -hmm. so much liability that would make your skin crawl and the amount of, I would argue that that data is actually, I would, I would be very curious about where that data is coming from because insurance doesn't become part of the public record. So who's right. reporting that data? I think it's higher than that. Robert, we've talked about going without insurance, and yeah. you're not a big fan, but I know you sell, you, it's your job to sell <laughs> no, insurance to people. No, it's not so, my job. But it's go a, ahead. As a consumer yeah. who grew up here in Florida, I've right. seen a lot of damage done by hurricanes, and it's by far a bigger risk of a hurricane damage than a fire damage. Mm. So in her situation, you know, it, it does get pretty pricey, but you've got a lot of factors in an older home, close to the water. All those things are pushing that rate higher. But uh, there might be ways to structure it. Um, right now, the citizens' rates are going up, uh, and you got to make those decisions financially. Um, unfortunately, when someone's buying a property like that and they just can't get insurance, what we're seeing is the day-to-day -day difference when an insurance agent, like I'll have agents that'll just sit on and just like refresh. Mm. So if you might not be, if it's ten thousand today, it might be less tomorrow. Like there is opportunity at the moment in the state of Florida for carriers to come back. Mm. So I would stay on top of it. It's not like a your quote now is applies in a month from now. In the 1925 house, though, that you don't qualify for any discounts. No matter what I do to my house, my house was it's a frame vernacular built of Cypress and Dade County pine. Hmm. There is no in, no inspection is ever going to, but it's been through every hurricane since 1925. Yeah. Well, the wind mitigation uh, they don't take into the factor the age of the house. It's all about the roof, the tie downs, and those type of things. So there may be some things that you would get credits for, windows, hurricane shutters, mm. opening protection. Mm. That has nothing to do with the age of the house. 
Greg Buck, you were All about right. to jump in on something? <coughs> yes, if I could. Um, I just wanted to add to this. One of the things we're not factoring in, in probably, you probably see more of it than anybody, but we have a lot of small business owners who are running Airbnbs <coughs> yes. who have been buying up a lot of these older right. homes. Now they're having to let them go. They just can't afford it. We have one in Lake Worth, just as you mentioned there, excuse me, um, that was going to pay 14000 a year. He just couldn't do it with the numbers that he was bringing in. Because they're cashing out of those, right? And mm. they're selling them because the market is if, on fire. But if the they bigger can. problem is that they're canceling their insurance because a lot mm. of them own them outright. Yeah. So mm. they will, these landlords, this is what I was saying earlier about if you're a tenant, you have to be aware of this. If, because insurance isn't public record, you don't know if your landlord That's, is carrying insurance or not. Right. So That's at a correct. bare minimum, if you are right. a landlord, and you do own your home out outright and you can't afford your normal homeowner's insurance, getting a liability policy, if you have tenants in place, is the responsible thing to do yeah, at a minimum. Right. And, um, yeah. and, and all the more we, reason if you're yeah. renting to get renter's insurance. Yeah. Correct. Right, Robert, yeah. I, I just think that that's an unknown that a isn't major, going to be seen by anybody, but absolutely, it's a big part. And I think the, you're right. I think the number is way higher than 15%. I think it'd be as high as 25 in Palm Beach County. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I want to give voice to uh, Maria. And David Berrios, you, you, you hung out for quite a while and you wanted to share. Go ahead. I actually had asked this question online um, and I have it here. Um, you know, it is evident that the, Amer the owning a piece of the American dream is not attainable for a great deal of the working class here in the state of Florida with, you know, these insurances and taxes um, going up. But for instance, I, I have an eight year old roof brand new windows that are maybe 15 months old, okay, brand new AC, my water heater is in great shape, and yet my insurance went up 150% the first year, 90% last year, and I'm expecting 30% more, you know, for it to go up this year. What, are, what, are, what can be done now? I mean, you set a plan in place, and that's great, but what can be done now to keep the homeowners in their home right now and the renters from leaving because they cannot afford the rents that homeowners are charging because of this? I mean, I hear all the time people are leaving the state and they were born and raised here and they cannot stay and live here any longer. They how, to, how close is that Re reality? Representative Oberdorf, that, I know you were very close. You were that talking very about close. I mean, more needs to be it, done. And we were actually hearing rumblings that, you know, this has to be back on the agenda mm -hmm. when lawmakers come back. Absolutely. For the new session. Something has to be done now. It, you, people, people cannot wait one, two, three, four years. It's just not not happening. Well, the I, working class is all, leaving. First of all, you're right in that I, I wish that we didn't have to wait. But we also have contracts. We also have that uh, where you, a insurance company has written a contract, has done a, uh, a measurable, laying it out over 18 or 24 months. Now we have put new laws into place. And those, those new laws apply to new policies. So those new policies will now then become the norm over that 18 to 24 months, as, uh, as Mr. Patronas talked about earlier. That is, that is what we're looking at. Now, there are... A, definitely additional things that, that should be done. As we delve into this, which is something that, and I agree with, with Senator Polsky, that we haven't dealt with for, for 20 some odd years. This is something we have to get more in depth with, we have to continue to do it, and we are committed to doing that. All right, I, I, I think, have, I oh, go ahead, Maria. One thing to say though. Yeah. I called my insurance agent today, um, and I said, listen, how else can, what else can I do to lower my insurance rate? I'm, can I, do, can I raise my deductible? No. OK, hmm. I can't raise my deductible. Um, so, you're so you're with Citizens, right? You're I'm with Citizens, citizens right. Insurance, absolutely. I'm with Citizens Insurance, and I can't raise my deductible. I mean, I've, I think I've done what, what I need to do in order to satisfy my insurance company, OK, and, and keep the value of my home. Well, I, I think the reforms that we're working on will bring in new competition and new markets. Um, we'll mm -hmm. bring in new companies that will hopefully give you some additional options with that. Robert, okay. you're optimistic? You. Yeah, I am very yeah. optimistic because, uh, you know, one thing for you, you're looking to fix it right now. So remember, your agent does not deal with every insurance company that's writing. So you've got to do your due diligence. Sometimes your agent is your friend and a client might stay with you for years. But I tell everybody, hey, if you can find something better, 
go, go for it, just let me look at it to make sure you're not being undercut or having problems. But the bottom line is I understand that people need to have insurance and I'm not the only provider. So you can do that right now. You can get it looked at by other agents and that's what's important. Okay, I, I, got, a, I got a question over here, go ahead. Hi, yes, so regarding the recent litigation, as far as the laws, I believe you have new laws going into effect in October, November. Do you feel that this is going to help alleviate some of the costs of the homeowner's insurance? And my second part of the question is, is that we kind of had a little bit of a conflictual um, discussion about this, because on one hand, you're saying that the litigation with all these new laws is going to help. However, we also stipulated that according to Mark Freelander, that we've gone up about 40% in the last, since I believe it's 2017, in the last six years, we've gone up about 40% as far as insurance costs for homeowners. So my question is, A, we're saying that the litigation is going to help, but at the same time, before we were talking about the cap, you're saying that there's no hope in, like, in the near future of having a cap. So how do you see that balancing or balancing out for a homeowner? Because on one hand, you're saying, okay, the litigation will help, with a new so, laws so it's, it's got to, it comes down to right to mm -hmm. the competition, getting more companies in here, Robert. Right? Correct. I mean, it, that, it's that's all what about drives the competition. The and the numbers I know, I don't care about what passed and what didn't. What I look at is, is there improvement in carriers? Yes, we're getting more carriers. Some of those carriers would not be here unless that legislation passed. Okay, we're seeing lower claims come in, and that's from everybody across the board. Um, so we're seeing more opportunities. That's going to be more competition. It'll be better for the consumers. Will it take 18, 24 months? Who knows? Um, because if the wind blows again in the wrong direction, then we got a problem. As these new companies come in, should there be more guardrails? It's a question, your opinion. Mm -hmm. Should there be more guardrails on the companies that are coming in so that they're required to spread out their risk throughout the state of Florida? So if one city is impacted, certainly they can't pay out all those claims if everybody cashes in, right? Should those discussions be had as well, these new companies come actuarially, in? Actuarially, these companies have run all those numbers. They will not oversaturate an area. Right. They know better. Mar yeah, Mark, maybe you want to chime in on this, right? On these new companies that are coming into the state and where their exposure is and how they map that out. Right. A uh, couple things. First of all, I want to go back to some of the comments that were made. The cost of insurance actually has gone up a lot more than 40% in the last few years. Actually, it's 42% just from last year, 102% over the last three years, 200% over the last five years. So much worse than what <laughs> the picture showed there. So obviously it shows the problem we have. Talking about the new companies, they are determined to write risks throughout the state of Florida. They've been very proactive about this. They're very bullish on the market and they are willing to cover wind storm risk. In fact, one of the new companies, CEO was interviewed last week after the hurricane and said, they're not backing away from Florida. They're coming in fully loaded to offer insurance coverage throughout the state of Florida. So we're hoping they deliver on that promise that there is opportunity to shop with these new companies, no matter where you live in the state and what kind of property you have. All right. We'll, we'll take any good news right. wherever we can get it. Mark Friedlander Mark, de delivering you. a little hope tonight. Uh, <laughs> Terrific. Thank you for yeah. taking the time and the extra time yeah. with us online to talk about this. And we tried to get even to everybody our guests, in the audience. our in-house guests who came here and stayed a little bit later. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, we hope you enjoyed or at least got something uh, out of uh, our coverage. Our Maybe coverage a couple of take so, takeaways, a few yeah. things you can do and apply to your own policy. But thanks for watching tonight. We're all in the same boat here. Absolutely. Yeah. Good night. All right. Good night.